Hey how's it going guys welcome back to another video today we're going to be talking about my experience so far with the Creality 3D printer so let's get right into it. Here is the printer itself so we actually have a dedicated table this time unlike day in and day 8 you would know what I'm talking about if you watch my channel but yeah let's go ahead and talk about how my build experience went with it while putting it together. So it was actually very very easy compared to the ANET which took about 8 hours I had to stay overnight and finish it off in the morning for the ANET and compared to this one this thing took about 45 or an hour or so to get this thing together and it was so easy to put together that I don't even know if I can even consider this one as a DIY printer because it was so easy. So basically if you have watched the unboxing this is one part this is one part and that is one part and then you have two little brackets on the sides to secure the thing this has a stopper switch and just a couple screws here and there and that's it and in total if I have to count there are about 14 screws that you put together and that is about it guys it's pretty amazing how well this thing came together and again if you have watched the unboxing all the cables are sleeved and they have their own connectors ready to connect to the main box without having to do any kind of special wiring or whatnot which was very nice to see now after i finished putting it together i ran into an issue now that issue was the hotbed itself here for whatever reason after i calibrated it and after calibrating each corner and then when i went to the center the center was actually warped inwards, which was very weird. And I looked online and there was only one other person that had the same issue. And he fixed his issue by putting a wedge under the plate to counter the warping, but that did not work for me. So after three days of trying to figure out what was going on, I decided to just take apart the whole hotbed by taking these four screws out, putting it aside on my other table and just going to sleep. The next morning I woke up, I put it back together and the bed was fixed. It was perfectly flat. Now ever since I did that, I had put tape pieces instead of the clips. I didn't want any weird kind of pressure going on. So I just put tape, blue painter's tape for the corners just to uh, stabilize it. And that's that. And ever since, it's been a week now, I've been printing like crazy and I have not had any issues with the bad warping or whatever it was that was happening. Now let's talk about how the overall experience of printing and then we'll go talk about the pieces that are printed so far. So here first of all you have this pull hoarder that you can connect with two thumb screws that comes with this thing. And um, basically let's talk about the box here. You have a switch in the back and it turns on like so. Very nice and quick. The menus and the layout and the display is very nice and clear. It is very easy to access and the best part about it is you can actually control each part of the printer manually while on the fly while you are using the printer. So. That is pretty cool. For example, you can go ahead and uh, control here and change the temperature for the nozzle, bed, fan speed, whatnot. And again, you can do that while printing at the same time. So if you like missed up something, you don't want to stop, you just quickly change the settings. Here's a little cool thing. You can switch this dial right here on the main menu and you can see that the percentage changes there. And basically what that does is it would actually increase the printing speed, which I have yet to try out, which is very, very interesting. But it would be interesting to test out in a future video. But again, the uh, menu here, the camera doesn't show up properly, the colors, the color under my fingers, that's what the printer looks like. But yeah, overall the display and the menu and the control knob is very nice and responsive, very easy to use, and that is great. So the noise you're hearing is actually from the power supply slash control box. So there's a fan here that cools the whole box here. And then you have, of course, that side fan that is always loud on most printers. And then you have one more fan over here that doesn't spin until you start printing. But when that last fan over here on the side starts spinning at 100%, it's hardly noticeable because of all the other fans you have spinning over here. Now one more thing is the nozzle feeding system. It's actually very nice and simple. And unlike the a A8, you don't end up with a sore thumb. So basically how it works is you have the spool going in here and the stepper feeder motor is right over here. And that motor feeds the spool into this tube and into the nozzle, which is fantastic. And again, it is such a breeze to change the filament because you don't have to have a sore thumb at the end of the process. And the best part, you can see where the filament is going. So it's very easy to change the filament. That is it for the printer. As you guys can see, we have tons of filament that I'm gonna start printing with. Uh, here are some of my tools. I got some pliers, the cutters that came with, a razor blade, spatula that it came with, which is very nice, and a lighter and some alpine alcohol to clean the platform, and the tape that it came with, which is actually pretty good. And yeah, let's go ahead and talk about the prints that I've done. Let's go. All right, so the first thing I actually printed after fixing the platform was this whistle right here. This thing is about a 140 decibel whistle. And if you don't want your ears to start ringing after using it, you probably want to bring a pair of earmuffs and uh, warn everyone else around you because this thing is just insane. 
But other than that, how it turned out was actually very nice. Now pretty much everything on this one was almost perfect. And again, this was the first print I did with the printer. And it turned out almost perfect. And the only part that didn't turn out too well was this little piece right here. But that's fine because this is supposed to be a ridge where you can actually bite on it. It's part of the design. So you can bite on it from here and have a nice rip and you can blow on it without having to hold it with your hands. The next thing I went ahead and printed out was actually this little Star Citizen Super Hornet. Now the 3D model I printed wasn't too high of a quality so it actually didn't turn out too bad. The model itself wasn't perfect, it had a lot of ridges and it wasn't clean. But overall it turned out pretty cool, just for a little nifty thing to look at. But um, that's that for a small thing. And then after I finished printing that, you can guess that I went ahead and printed this headphone stand. Now this thing actually turned out pretty nicely. But yeah, I needed a headphone stand and I just printed one. So this one was actually featured uh, last week on the Thingiverse website. And this one took about 11 hours and a half. And overall it turned out pretty well. Except for something right here. I don't know what that is. I'll figure out that later. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's part of the layering. That's something I noticed when the printer moves, my table moves. And that probably is why it's around the corners usually when it prints. But um, overall it turned out pretty good. And overall, I mean, the build quality here is really nice. The layering is almost perfect. So this thing was printed like this and we had some layering issues over here, but that's fine. And in the back here where you can see some of the problems were, and I did wet sand it, so it's much better now than before. But the reason that this came out kind of bad was because I actually printed it with some supports, which I shouldn't have because after researching online, it seemed like you didn't have to. But since I do have three headphones, I'm probably gonna build two more, one in red and one in blue. Now, one thing I might do the next time I print this, I might scale it up just a tiny bit more because you can see in the pictures that you gotta close the headphones all the way in order for it to fit. So yeah, overall, it turned out really nicely for a large scale print. And uh, the next thing I printed was this guy right here. So this one was um, also featured on the Thingiverse website last week. At first, I didn't really like the model and I thought, what the hell, let's go ahead and print it out and see what kind of uh, performance we can get with that many holes. And I was surprised how well it came out. I mean, take a look at how many holes there are and how well it managed to print them without having too much of a hassle. Now, it did sand it down as well. I did work it out. There was a ton of stringing, which is something I figured out how to fix and uh, learn to use with the printer. But overall, this thing turned out great. After that, of course, I printed this thing since it still had the blue filament. This is a slide whistle, so this is how it sounds. Yeah, it's pretty loud. It's just like those old lollipops that you get a whistle inside of them. So it's pretty cool. If you guys are wondering how this thing sounds, here I'm going to just go ahead and blow it and close my ears. That's what it sounds like. There goes my right ear because I covered my left ear, but... And then moving on, I printed this Super NES keychain, which is pretty cool. And as you guys can see, I have used the silver filament and uh, painted these pieces with some permanent marker or Sharpie. And the next thing I printed was actually this steam engine whistle. So basically you have two whistles here, two tones, and uh, they sound a little bit like this. And if you blow them together, it sounds like a steam engine train. And if you guys haven't guessed already, I'm kind of into whistles now because of the street printer. Because you can just go ahead and print these things out. Probably gonna print some more whistles, probably some flutes and whatnot, especially those bird chirping ones. So you put water in them and it sounds like a bird whistling, but yeah, let's move on. And the next thing I printed was this phone holder. It's a bunny and someone asked me to print it for them. So here it is. And that's that. It's a cool phone holder. It's small and it does work. So that's pretty cool. And also 25% in full and it turned out pretty awesome. Moving on, here we have the soldier, which actually uh, is probably the worst printed one out of the bunch here. Also possibly because of my problem, because I also printed this with some supports. And what happened here was uh, I actually printed this with some supports and the supports kind of affected how the model came out. It kind of broke some parts of it when I was taking out the supports. For example, his jacket here, it kind of broke off. It should go all the way down here and his helmet here broke and his mouth also broke. You can see he's, uh, he's shouting. So I put an electrical piece of tape here to uh, cover his helmet that broke off and painted everything that you can see in black with a Sharpie. And it turned out pretty cool just for an object that you can put far away and take a look at. And uh, how well it feels, it feels great. The details there, it does have a lot of detail, which you can't see because of the camera. But here are his fingertips. You can see that there, you can see his individual fingertips. They came out pretty okay. There's a bit of stringing, but overall for a piece you can put somewhere far away and just take a look at, it's pretty cool. And he can stand on his own, so. And finally, here we have the flare gun from the Pyro in TF2 also. And these guys can see it, it also turned out pretty good. 
even this piece right here is still alive surprisingly and yeah so this was actually scaled down this was supposed to be a full-size flare gun but i scaled it down to um this little tiny piece to see how it would come out and it actually came out pretty well you can even see the old trigger there is still intact and overall it came out pretty nicely so overall what do i really think about this 3d printer was it worth it with all the trouble that i had for those first three days when i was building this thing well the building process again took about 45 minutes and it took three days for me to figure out what was going on with the warping issue and with that being said i only found one other person having that same issue online so your chances of having this issue are probably very low but if you do end up having that issue well now you know how to fix it basically take out the platform put it aside and put it back together and you should be good to go and once that's done it should be all smooth sailing again the power supply and the control box are very easy to use it's very simple very user friendly so the question is was it worth it yeah it was definitely worth it for what you're getting the size the capabilities and the build quality it's fantastic it's beautiful and it works like a charm and over here we have some filaments basically here we have the ma3d brand and as well as the black one is also ma3d and everything else the blue the green and the silver they are all the anet brand filament and i gotta say they are actually very good all the things here were actually printed on the anet brand of course except for the red ones so if you are planning to snatch one of these guys for yourself and you're wondering how well the anet brand of filament is well i can tell you that it is actually pretty good possibly better than the ma3d but again i haven't printed enough with the ma3d on this printer to compare to the anet so if you're just getting into 3d printing and want to get your hands on a 3d printer that can print pretty large things then i can totally recommend this thing right here and yeah guys that is pretty much it for this video thank you guys for watching hope you guys have enjoyed this video and found it helpful if you did hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this and if you're someone starting out with 3d printing and want to learn along with a noob like me then feel free to follow and yeah i'll see you guys in the next video so take care everyone